It's okay, go ahead. You want Facebook Live? It's fine. No, 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 I'm just, gonna, I'm just recording. Uh, Google Voice came on. Yeah, it registered the I got you. So what I'm doing here, guys, is uh, I'm going to set up a little uh, template where I've got it on the camera. So when I look on the camera here, when I set the cue up, I can see myself on the TV right down the middle here. Doesn't really matter if I have the TV or not, but it's kind of just making sure that I get, a, get the camera dead lined up so that when I look at it, when I look back at it later, then I'm not looking at it at an angle so I can really assess my stroke on the shot here. So I'm gonna put a, uh, I'm gonna put a little dot here. I'm gonna move it over just a tad right there. I'm gonna adjust the cue this way. So that's pretty straight coming in there. So I know if I'm in that line, in that zone right there, then, uh, then we're gonna be good to go. And I'm gonna move the cue down here so I can put a dot right here, right in the middle of the cue. This is approximate. You could do it better with a ruler if you wanted, but that gives me a pretty straight shot between these two balls right here. And it's a good way to test, quickly test your stroke and see if you're able to hit it dead on and either stop the cue ball dead or bring it straight back, okay? So we're gonna do this with like uh, three or four balls real quick and just real quick video. We're gonna see how bad my stroke is and uh, it's very bad, so. Well, I didn't think it was that bad, but uh, obviously you can see that, that uh, we need some work. Now here's the thing, right? When you have a center to center shot like this, it's not that you're so much worried about the aim, right? Because obviously, you can use the edges of the balls and you can go edge to edge, you can go center to center. If you use the edges of the balls, right, and you get straight down the center, now you're looking at the, uh, at the ball and we got a real good tip the other day about aiming at the bottom of the ball once you're down. So I'll look back on video and we'll see whether the aim was even right. But you can see right there that even if I made that ball, I made it to the right here which was only a, a fraction of an inch from actually missing it, and the cue ball went all the way over here. So that was just uh, an incredibly bad stroke right there, and that wouldn't get you very far um, if you're playing in an important match, if you're, if you're uh, not able to bring that ball back where you need it to be. So I'm failing this test miserably, as you can see here. The point is not to assess how good or how bad I play personally. The point is for you guys to see that we've built a system here. You can do this at home or do it at the pool room if you want, but it's kind of to show you what, what the power of a camera can do for you by going back and looking at how your stroke is. Now that was better, but you can see it still came back over here, you know, which would have meant that I actually missed the ball you know, to the right of the pocket there. I didn't miss it, but I went to the right of the pocket. So if the shot was super critical, you know, if say if it was up here, if I had missed it with that much mark, with, with that hitting it that far off, then actually the ball would not have gone because with more distance, your margin of error decreases rather than increases. So the closer I am to the pocket, the more I can be off and still make the ball. Doesn't mean I'll get my position, but I can still make the ball. But if it's if the two balls further back along this line and I hit it off, then it's not going with the same exact hit. All right, one last shot and we'll see if I can bring this ball straight back to me. Can't even make it. So as you can see, folks, I've got a long way to go to get my stroke grooved in right there where it should be so that I not only know that I'm aiming right, but I also know that I'm hitting right. Okay, that's it. Matt, you want to go ahead and hit a couple balls? We'll see how Matt does here.
Okay, so a good stop shot right there. Um, that's actually a better way to kind of test to get in to get in the groove is to learn how to make a dead stop shot from any distance, and then you can start pulling it back and coming back. See how see how the the nine ball wobbled there. So Matt actually missed that ball in a sense because as I just told you. If the four ball had been here and he hit it the exact same way, then he would have definitely missed it somewhere in here. So the idea here is we want to, we want to, especially with this shot, we want to get dead in the center of the pocket unless there's some reason why you want to cheat it to the left or right of center, which is, which is also something that you need to know how to do. Okay, so when you are dead of center. Well, don't depend on the dots, just shoot the shot. What do you want to do? Stop it and draw it. Draw it. Draw it straight back. Okay, there we go. So Matt said that the dots aren't straight <laughs> here. He said they're not straight to the pocket, okay? So, which is probably true. Because, you know, I kind of did it real quick. So if we, if we line this up kind of through the center of the shaft right there in the center back here, then you'll notice that we have an illusion here. If I put the cue ball right at the end of the cue from that position, you'll notice that I'm to the, I'm to the left of the pocket right here. Um, it may look like right of the pocket on yours, but it's not. What, he, what he's referring to when he says those dots aren't straight, what he's referring to is that from his perspective, when he gets down to shoot this shot, he's not looking at the center of the pocket because if you line it up there and you go for a, a dead straight shot, you cannot make it in the center of the pocket if you're dead straight. So therefore, getting it in the center of the pocket requires a little bit of a cut. Now, what that means, folks, is you have to be diligent about your setup. Now, you'll notice I set this up in just a few seconds, but if you're going to get good practice, really good practice, then get yourself a nice long straight edge. You know, where something's straight so that you know it's dead straight when you want to line up shots like this. Um, depending on the cue allows you a margin of error because you've got feel. You're trying to, to kind of estimate where the center of the cue is. And as it's a tapered piece of wood, it gets thicker back here and it gets harder to estimate where the center is. So if you're trying to line it up under this. Now another way that you can do it, where you can line up everything dead center, is you can take the balls like this. You can actually take the balls, set them up in the pocket, and this will give you a visual aid. So there I've got the four ball lined up. Now I'm just going to continue to use that existing dot right there. Now I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to peel this one off, and we're going to look at it. And I'm going to get it lined up right there. Okay. Now I'm just going to make a tiny dot right where that is so I can see. Here, I'll do it again. I'm going to wipe all that off. I'm going to come back. I'm going to go right here in front instead so I can see it, okay? So I'm going to get that all lined up. This will also help you to work on your own sighting in your own eyes to see kind of dominant wherever it's at. So there we go. I think that's pretty good right there from my perspective. Now we need to come to the left just a touch. Okay, that's good right there. So what I'm gonna do, pound that in just a little bit. Now when I move it, I got my dot right there so I can put it right on the center. Right on the center right there. Now if I'm right, everything should be set up perfect. Yep, now we're good. Now, another thing right there. So earlier when I did the shots and I had it lined up wrong and I was trying to go really quickly, that might have also been an issue because when I told you Earlier when I was doing it, I was focusing on the straightness of the shot here, not really realizing in my, in my haste to set it up that it was actually a cut shot to get to the center of the pocket. Let's see if I can do any better now that I've taken a little bit more time 
to set this up. Okay, that's a little bit better. Even though, even though I came back, I drew it back to the left from there, which means the, the cue ball went in the pocket on the right. And again, when you review this on video, um, you can slow it down and you can watch it in slow motion to see if exactly what happened did happen. But if the task, if the task is to bring it straight back, for example, if you've got balls blocking here and any deviation will stop you, if you need to get into this area, then bringing it back right here like this, bringing it back right there stops your, stops your run. So you definitely cannot be satisfied with, see that's obviously right there not going to work. You cannot be satisfied with mediocrity. You can't be satisfied with almost being there. Okay, this time I'm coming straight back. Wow. <laughs> I came straight back, see? I came straight back. Okay, let's do it again. Well, what we're discovering is a lot of, I got a lot of stroke issues, you know, to deal with. And you can't be embarrassed by this. I mean, because that's the shot right there. Even though I came back just a little bit to the left of the dot, I'm in that zone right there where I need to be. So if, if, if my leave position had to be here, I made it. But look at that. It took me like 15 shots to get there. So my percentages on this are horrible. Okay. And that's the whole purpose of structured and deep practice is to get your percentages up to an acceptable level. I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to end this real quick with a, um, with a, uh, something that Alex Pagulian said when he played Scott Frost. Um, I'm going to say that it was, uh, the, um, the big match that they played for $25,000. Um, Alex was asked, he said, they said, you know, you took a lot of shots that seemed risky to the observers, you know, kind of like all or nothing shots. And um, Alex's answer was something like this. It was, um, Alex's answer went something like this. It was, whenever I play pool, when I'm facing a shot, if I am, if I know that I'm 80% to make that shot, then I'm going to take the shot because there's no reason, and I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing here, but there's no reason to be afraid of a shot where I, as a pool player, know that my percentage of making it is, is very high. Um, and that's, that's really what it comes down to, folks. If, if you're confident with reason, you know, of making a shot, then take the shot. But the only way to know that you're confident is to do things like this where you actually know what your, your personal statistics are on that. Um, once you know what your statistics are, what your, what your bench line is, so to speak, or, you know, then you can turn around and work on improving it and upping your percentages, okay? And you can also, by using video like we're doing right now, you can figure out why you're missing the shot. Are you aiming wrong? Like when you get down on the ball, are you, are you physically aimed wrong? Um, which then it wouldn't matter how good your stroke is. Actually a bad stroke would help you if you're aimed wrong because now you're going to kind of be able to throw the ball in rather than, than uh, shooting it straight and making it. Uh, but, but the thing is, you would have to be so wildly inconsistent if you're not doing a, a bad stroke on purpose to make the ball. You know, there is, there is shots where you can kind of twist the ball in by pumping your cue or pushing the cue ball a different way. I've covered that in earlier videos, but the, uh, the main thing is, is you want to try to play pool where you're making every single shot that you make with a dead straight stroke. Um, and the only time that you're going to use something that's not a dead straight stroke is for a very particular reason and you know why that is and you know how to do it, okay? Not, you don't want it to be something random where you're aimed wrong and you're teaching yourself that you need a little bit of body English or twisting or whatever to make the shot. 
Because that little bit of body English, if that's in your game, then it's in your game on all shots, including, as you saw, that straight shot right there. So as much as I know about pool and um, as good as I can play on some days, that those bad body habits, those bad stroke habits that I have right there, they ultimately will keep me down. They will keep my percentages down from being able to execute shots like that when they really when I really need to get them done. Um, because I might be in a game and I might have to take that shot. I might not have a choice, you know? Like if, if that's the shot right there and I gotta get back here for for shape on the four ball, right? I, I gotta get here for shape on the four ball. That's the shot. Well, given my current level of skill physical level of skill with having a bad stroke, this shot becomes iffy. So I have to, everything has to be hitting on all cylinders for me. I have to be feeling really good. My arm has to be really loose. And I have to hope that at the moment of impact, I actually got a good stroke going on there. Whereas if I get down on this and I really, really train, then it flips the other way. I don't have to be hitting on all cylinders. I don't have to feel really good. And I would have to do something extraordinary to actually hit it back, okay? Because my new normal is a good stroke, all right? Not my normal is a bad stroke, and my, the exceptional part is when I lay down a good stroke on the shot. Okay, you guys got that? That's the purpose of structured and deep practice and doing it the right way, all right? So, my ego won't let me put this shot up without trying it at least once. And here's the problem. If I hit this shot right now, I'm gonna probably lay down the cue and walk away and feel real good about myself for the rest of the day, but I'll be lying to myself because I'll know that even if I hit this right now, there's a real good chance that I could do it 15 times in a row and not hit it. And uh, if this was a money game, then I'd be walking out loser. So, that shows you right there. I need a lot of work, and I'll bet you do too. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.